all editions of Exalted have a stunting system, and I made a video two years ago explaining how the stunting rules evolved over those editions. The stunting rules are still to this day a source of disagreement between players. Some love them, others hate them. There are also those who like them, but think they are bad at using them. Stunting rewards players for creatively expressing their character's actions. This can create some unfair circumstances where players are practically rewarded for being creative and expressive, while more reserved players feel disadvantaged. Being good at coming up with creative and expressive descriptions on the spot is truly a skill that not everyone has, but like with all skills it can be honed. In this video I'm going to discuss some ways that you can both improve the quality of your stunts and feel more comfortable making them on the spot. While I'm sure that most people can get something out of the video, it's more directed towards those players who genuinely feel challenged by stunting and usually avoid doing it. And while the tips I'm going to give in this video may be helpful, they aren't miracle solutions that will automatically make you an amazing stunter. It still takes practice, but it could nudge you in the right direction. There are three degrees of stunts a player can make. A one-point stunt is awarded to those who describe how their characters do their actions instead of simply stating what kind of action they are doing. A two-point stunt is awarded to those who are more elaborate in their description and often incorporate environment or other details into the stunt. Finally, a three-point stunt is awarded to those whose stunt makes all the players go wow. This system makes it easy to assume that players who have a knack for descriptive language will have an advantage in game and be rewarded more often. This is true to an extent, but it's not a full truth. The storyteller is the one who judges the player's stunts, and a good storyteller should be aware when someone struggles with stunting and be more lenient with them. It can be frustrating for a player to always be rewarded lesser stunts than their peers, and it can take enjoyment away from the game if the player feel like they have to stunt when they aren't comfortable doing so. If you're a storyteller watching this video, I recommend that you encourage players who struggle with stunts to take a moment to think without feeling pressure to speak up. It can be frustrating when the narrative is interrupted because of an indecisive player, but it's a thousand times more important that the players are comfortable playing than that there's a hiccup in the narrative flow. If your player states that they want to make a stunt and would like a moment to gather their thoughts, let them have that moment. It means that they want to stunt and should be encouraged to do so. I'm going to go through a number of different tips and tricks for improving your stunts in this video, but it's important to remember that many of my suggestions will likely feel like extra work to some. If you're not passionate about exalted or stunting and only feel pressured by your group to improve, then Following the steps in this video could add to that pressure in a negative way. However, if you feel strongly that you want to improve your stunts and would even be willing to maybe do a bit of extra work to make that happen, then I'm sure this video will help you. The quality of a stunt isn't determined by the words you use or the number of adjectives you throw into a sentence. It's determined by how others relate to it and how easy they can visualize it. Most people's primary sensory perception is the visual one, and because of that we tend to focus on visual depictions. However, in order to improve the quality of a stunt, you should practice using other sensory descriptors. It's easy to simply state that your fire aspect's anima looks like a bonfire. Most people know how a bonfire looks like and can easily visualize it. But if you want to improve the quality of your description of that anima, consider other senses as well. What does it sound like? It softly crackles. What does it smell like? It smells like burning charcoal. What does it feel like? It burns like an oven. These are all simple descriptors, but each additional descriptor increases the quality of the overall stunt. Now it doesn't only look like a bonfire, but it softly crackles and smells like burning charcoal, with everyone standing close to it feeling like they are in an oven. You don't need to add a bunch of fancy adjectives to be able to relate to and visualize that description. As you become better at reminding yourself of adding additional sensory descriptors, you may want to experiment with relational ones as well. For example, the anima looks like the bonfire at the harvest festival where you first met. The anima has a similar smell to the forge where you made this diclave. The hot sensation of feeling the anima up close is eerily similar to how it felt fighting that ifrit lord. These types of descriptors relate the stunt to different situations that players may be sentimental towards. 
By invoking the other player's memories of other events, they are likely to already have mental pictures of those other events and will subconsciously fill in details and form a more complete picture. In other words, a relational descriptor makes your stunt seem more impressive than it probably is because you're associating your stunt with a previous picture instead of drawing an entirely new one. Relational descriptors are difficult for a beginner, but non-visual sensor descriptors don't have to be. You often just need to remind yourself of them because visual descriptors are so central to how we perceive things that they often overshadow anything else. You can write down the words sound, smell, taste, touch on a piece of paper that you often glance over to keep reminding yourself in the moment to not skip over those descriptors. This is a good idea for storytellers as well if they want to improve the way they describe scenes. Because stunts are descriptive, a good stunter is someone who can clearly visualize their character and their place in the scene. One of the most important things to help you improve your stunts is to have a clear visual depiction of your own character. This doesn't just mean that you know what your character looks like, but you need to know how they behave, what are their mannerisms, their quirks, and what makes them stand out from the rest. Close your eyes and visualize your character in a particular scenario. How do you see them interact with the world around them? By continuing to visualize your character, you'll become better at getting an instinctual understanding of how they would interact with the world around them. While this is merely a single step forward, it will be helpful when visualizing your stunts later. Visualizing your character should also mean the powers at their disposal. All exults have charms and other powers, such as spells and evocations. Go through your powers one after another and visualize how that power manifests. You could even write down your own fluff text if you want. For example, perhaps your strong dawn cast roars and his muscles roil whenever he uses Heaven Thunder Hammer. Perhaps your holy zenith cast makes a prayer and releases a radiant burst of essence when using the same charm. Perhaps your intellectual twilight cast is hitting pressure points with pinpoint accuracy, which activates the effects of that same charm. It's the same charm described in three different ways based on the characteristics of the solar using it. Whenever you acquire a new power, try to figure out a way to make that power yours. This doesn't mean that you will always stunt that power in the same way, but it adds to a library of character visualizations that you can draw from in-game. For example, let's picture that holy zenith cast whose heaven thunder hammer looked like a radiant burst following a prayer. Let us say that they are a former Maculate Monk turned Sun Worshipper who has tattooed 10 prayers to the sun on their torso. By giving it some additional flair, we can decide to have one of those tattoos light up whenever we spend a moat on an Excellency. When we max out with a 10 moat Excellency, all tattoos flare up as we invoke their prayers. We already have a visual depiction of how this character's Heaven Thunder Hammer looks, but now we can combine this visualization with our Excellency visualization. If we spend 5 motes on an Excellency, 5 tattoos flare up, we invoke the prayers of those tattoos and the power of those prayers are channeled through Heaven Thunder Hammer. We could even take some time outside of the game to write down the meaning behind each of the 10 prayers so that we get an associated verbal component to add to the stunting repertoire. While this may seem complicated on the surface, all you're actually doing is combining a few distinct visualizations that you've already established and know by heart into a single impressive stunt. Exalted is at its core a game about style. This doesn't mean that you need to have an over-stylized and super eccentric character, but it means that you need to have a clear vision of who your character is and what makes them memorable. This gives you a foundation to tap into when designing your stunts. As I showed in this example, by simply taking your time to visualize your character and their powers, you start creating a library of components that you can then use to construct a stunt. While the components themselves are the same, different combinations of them in different situations ultimately create different results. If you feel like you're often using the same powers in similar fashion with repeating visualizations, then you can start applying external information, such as scenery, to further distinguish one stunt from another. This is harder to do. When it comes to your own character and their powers, you can establish that prior stunt bank to draw from. Whenever scene, environment and situation changes, it's difficult to draw upon already established visualizations. You need to make new ones on the spot. The good thing about stunting in Exalted is that you get narrative control over your action. 
As long as you don't incorporate details that are too narratively important, you can add your own details to the scene without necessarily having to ask the storyteller for permission. I think the RPG Blender did as well in their actual play of the Daughter of Nexus. When the player asked how tall is the ceiling, the storyteller answered as tall as what is dramatically appropriate for what you're trying to do. Because you're not restricted by the limitations of what the storyteller has established, the extent of your stunt is only limited by how well you can visualize your character interacting with the environment around them. If you have a stunt bank of established visualizations, such as how Heaven Thunder Hammer manifests when your character uses it, it becomes easier to pair those visualizations with external and on-the-spot information. Let's say you're fighting in a temple, but the storyteller hasn't gone into elaborate detail on how this temple looks. It's easy to make an assumption that it has stone pillars, burning braziers, an altar of offerings, and the like. You could draw upon your visualization of Heaven Thunder Hammer to crush one of the pillars and cause stone from the ceiling to fall onto your enemy. While this was effectively you using Heaven Thunder Hammer upon them, the stunt takes advantage of the environment in a way that substitutes the charm's effects. The inflicted knockdown is caused by falling stones instead of you punching them into the floor. And like mentioned before, you don't need to add a bunch of adjectives to be rewarded a two-point stunt for that kind of description. Like I mentioned before, it takes practice to get better at this, but establishing a stunt bank is a good start. When constructing a visualization of one of your powers, you can also imagine how those powers interact with different materials common for the settings you play in. If you're in the frozen north, you could imagine that your punches have such speed that ice melts and steam rise from your arms. If you're in a city, you could imagine them splintering wood and crushing stone. If you're in a frozen city, you could imagine both at the same time. You may have the right man of these visualizations down in the beginning, but as you gain more practice using them, you will soon not only draw them from memory, but come up with variations and new ones on the spot. When most people think of stunts, they think of action scenes and great physical feats. Exalted encourages stunting for all manner of actions, and it's a different beast altogether to wrap your mind around social and mental stunts. I've seen some people suggest that social stunts are when the player is actually saying everything their character is saying, word for word. I don't think you have to do that to earn yourself a social stunt reward. Instead, the same concept should apply here as for physical stunts. Visualize your character's social mannerisms and powers and add them to your stunt bank. Instead of focusing on the words they are saying to persuade, bargain or instill, put an emphasis on other descriptors. For example, if you want to sell a broken object, a stunt could be I distract the merchant's attention away from the broken object by maintaining eye contact and asserting myself whenever she looks back at it. Instead of focusing on the words you use to sell the broken object, you draw upon a visualization of your character's mannerism. The words you use aren't important since it is your distractions that help make the trade. The merchant is too focused on you to notice the faults. That's a social stunt without uttering a line of dialogue. A mental stunt can be visual as well, as you describe how your character behaves when trying to remember information, or how they analyze things around them, like Sherlock Holmes in the fighting pit. But it can also offer up a new set of challenges. For example, is it still a stunt if the thing you're describing can only be imagined by players and not seen by their characters? As storyteller, I would say yes. The ones you're trying to impress are your friends, not the characters in-game. If you want to make an action to see if you know a particular piece of information, you can rely on relational descriptors to portray how you find the answer within yourself. Instead of describing how your stunt looks, sounds and smells, describe what memories and feelings you evoke when trying to find the information you're looking for. Did you study geomancy at a heptagram and are now standing before a broken lens? Maybe seeing the man's reminds you of Kathak Suro sat in front of you in class and who you had a crush on. Maybe the act of studying the man's is reminding you of Sura. By relating to how studying this man's reminds you of your old feelings for Sura and how those feelings motivate you to go forward, you have a stunt already there. It's not easy to consistently make creative stunts and practice makes perfect. I hope that this video has inspired you to maybe try a few things differently to see if they improve your stunts. And even if they don't at first, putting a greater emphasis on visualizations, which I've talked repeatedly about in this video, could be helpful to at least make your character feel more alive in some ways. Also remember that it's 
perfectly okay to not be the best in the world at making stunts. If you're happy and comfortable with the way you're playing and the way you're expressing yourself, you shouldn't let anyone, let alone me, tell you what you need to improve. The purpose for this video isn't to tell people to get their stunts up to par with what I or others think is good. Its purpose is to act as a resource for those who want to keep honing their skills and perhaps find new approaches to roleplaying. If you think these suggestions are valuable, then maybe they can be useful outside of stunting as well. I think that the most important lesson to take from this video is that it's not the language you use that determines the quality of the stunt. I know that I make much more creative and elaborate stunts in my native tongue than in English, and I often struggle with on-the-spot descriptions. As long as you can express the fantasy of what you're trying to accomplish in-game, it doesn't really matter what words you use to express that fantasy. What's important is that people get a picture in their head that's different from a simple declaration of intent, such as I punch them. However, sometimes a simple I punch them is enough. Stunting can be exhausting after all, and while I think that good stunts add a lot of value to the game, I'm not the biggest fan of the stunting rules overall. If you like this video and want to see more, make sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. Also make sure to check out my content on Patreon and the Storyteller's Vault. I'm curious to know what you like and dislike about the stunt system and what struggles you face or tools you use when trying to come up with cool stunts. And until next time, see you in creation.